Hello everybody and welcome back to our study in 1 John. We will begin chapter 4 today. We're going to start uh, verse 1, go all the way to verse 6. Uh, we have some pretty deep verses to study today. Um, so let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer and then we will, uh, we will open His Word and study these, uh, these verses. Lord Jesus, we, we, we humbly come before Your throne. I'm just in awe of you, Lord, and the love that you displayed on the cross um, for your children. Thank you for counting us um, among your sheep, Lord. I pray as we open up these verses, these verses are very um, uh, very poignant, very, very straightforward, um, and uh, challenges us, Lord, and challenges us to kind of stand firm on the truth. Um, Lord, I pray that you, Holy Spirit, you reveal the truth of these verses. Um, that as we are called in these verses to test the spirits, that's only possible, um, Holy Spirit, if you are abiding in us and teaching us and showing us the truth. Um, God, we, we, I pray, Lord, that I decrease, that you increase, and that we stick to the task, the, the, the text of Scripture, and that we, we continue to turn to it to test the spirits, where we apply the, what, the, what you say in your word, in the Bible, in the scriptures, um, and apply that and use that as the, the mechanism, the, the, the truth that we then test the spirits that we hear. Um, so God, I pray, use this video to bring you glory. Um, we love you, Lord Jesus, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so the Apostle John wrote this letter, right? He wrote it to a bunch of believers, and he wrote it for two reasons. The first reason was to provide assurance regarding a believer's salvation. Now, the second reason is to identify and combat false teachers. So the Holy Spirit, through the Apostle John, writing to this group to identify, to help them identify, and then combat the false teachers that were coming in and teaching lies. Now that purpose is what we'll see um, why he wrote ver verses 1 through 6 in chapter 4. Now we know that the Apostle John is known as the Apostle of Love. Okay? He's known as the Apostle of Love, but he has a passion for the truth. And he's been given a gift by the Holy Spirit to speak this truth in love. And so as we approach these verses today, and as we approach and, and engage in the command that the Holy Spirit through John gives us as believers, just like he gave the church that he's writing to, as we engage in that, that we must engage in this, this, this command to test the spirits um, in humility, in love, not in pride, not in arrogance, not in anger and frustration. And it's a, it's a battle that I deal with and, 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 and just approaching these things. And as I see um, the, the, the spirits that aren't teaching the truth, the false teaching spirits that, that aren't teaching this, the, the, the truth of Scripture, the, the, the anger and, fl and, and frustration builds up, but we must approach this with uh, gentleness, with, with humility, and with love because it's serious and we have to recognize that the consequences of those that are teaching lies that don't line up with Scripture, that they're, they're professing to be speaking on behalf of Jesus Christ and the Bible, but what they're saying is nowhere in the Scripture and in fact is completely opposite. Or, or they completely remove stuff from the Scripture, from the Gospel, and don't even talk about it. And so we must, we, we must go through this command of seeking um, and testing the spirits um, with humility, gentleness and cautiousness and, and being very, very, very focused in on what's being said behind the pulpit and what's being what, what God is saying in his word and I'm no different than I'm not outside of, of, of this you are to be doing the very same thing with me with what I say test what I say against the scriptures that's your responsibility it's my responsibility to do the same thing when I hear other people teaching um, and, and preaching God's word so I'm no different you need to be testing what I say against the Word of God as well. 
And so let's, uh, let's go ahead and start with chapter 4. Um, we're going to read verses 1 through 6. The, the Holy Spirit through the Apostle John writes, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world. And the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So we know that just because something shines, something sparkles, doesn't mean it's authentic. I mean, if the sunlight hits a cubic zirconia the right way, that thing will pop, it'll shine. But just because it sparkles and shine doesn't mean it's a real diamond. It's not. It's a fake. And so the same can be said with, 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 with um, people who are speaking on behalf of God, false teachers who are in the name of uh, Christianity or in the name of Jesus, they're, they're professing, and, 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 and there's, there's no authenticity. How do we know if something is authentic? It's if we put it up against God's Word to determine if it is real. We talk about this all the time, about applying tests to substances. I mean, the fool's gold, the, 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 the gold test. When gold miners would, would um, find gold, they pick it up and they bite it. They applied a test to it to determine if it's authentic. We are to apply the test of the Word of God against what we hear, people that are teaching the Word of God, me included, to determine if it's in fact authentic. Just because it sparkles and shines, is in, and exciting doesn't mean it's authentic. The only way we know if what we're hearing um, about Jesus is authentic is if it lines up with God's Word. That's the test that we are to um, put forward. And so John knows um, his readers, us included, were going to be under attack by false teachers. So the Holy Spirit through John delivers these verses to the, the, the group that he's writing to because he knows that they're going to be under attack. False teachers are going to come in and teach lies. So John is writing to identify these false teachers and then combat them. And then we'll get into the specifics of these verses here in a minute. But what we see in these verses is we see the Holy Spirit through John um, giving the believer, the giving the church that he's writing to, us included, a command to test the spirits. A command to do it. You have got to test the spirits. And we'll talk about that more in detail. So then he gives the reason why, the reason to test the spirits. And then in verses 2 through 6, he gives the guidelines for how to test the spirits. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you, Holy Spirit, uh, through the Apostle John to provide us with this. This is so important because we got to make sure that what we're hearing and listening to is in fact the Word of God, is in fact truth. And so let's look at it. Let's start with verse 1, um, where we see the Holy Spirit through John giving us a command to test the spirits. Giving the church he's writing to, and now the Holy Spirit through the Apostle John, giving us a command to test the spirits. So he says, the first thing, he says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits. He says, do not believe every spirit. Now the word here, believe, when paired with the word not, because we see not believe, do, beloved, do not believe. So the verb believe in the Greek um, paired with the word not could literally be translated 
stop believing. So what does that mean? Think about that. He's saying stop believing. That means that they're already doing it. It's not, hey, pay attention. When it comes, don't do it. It's, hey, you're doing it right now. Stop believing every spirit, but test the spirit. So that's the command. Praise God for those, those men and women in our lives that help to point us to these things and, and reveal these truths, these brothers and sisters in Christ, but more importantly, the Holy Spirit through the Apostle John telling us, stop believing every spirit. And so when, when, when you get a command like that, or even when I, when I, when I give um, my boys, when I give my boys a command to, um, or a directive to go clean the back room, right? Clean up the back room, clean up your toys. First thing that they say is why? So I said, okay, so I'm patient at this point. I'll say, uh, because we gotta be good stewards of the things that God has given us and they have a place, we have to keep things nice and neat and clean. Well then, they, what do you think they say next? Why? So I might go a little bit further and say, it's because, we, again, we, we want to be good stewards. And when, when, when people, um, and, you know, if these, these gifts for birthday presents, people have spent their resources on providing us with these toys. And we want to be, we want to be good stewards of them. Well, why? At a certain point, um, I, in the flesh, would get to the point where I would say, because I said so. And I know when I was a kid and asking that, well, why? Well, why? Well, why? Well, why? Well, why? At a certain point, it's because I said so. But praise God, the Holy Spirit through John doesn't do that in these verses. He gives us the reason, right? Because what's the command? Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits. Well, why, Holy Spirit? Why am I to do that? Well, he gives us the answer to the, the reason why the re in the rest of verse 1. Let's read it. To see whether they are from God... Here's why. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. So why are we to test the spirits? For many false prophets have gone out into the world. There are many of them. They're all over the place, and it's a serious problem. That's why. Because they're everywhere. Not just back in John's day, but right now, today, they are everywhere. And so we're called to test the spirits. Test the spirits against what? God's Word, folks. God's Word in the context in which it's been written. We have to submit to that. And so that's the reason is because they are everywhere. Now, Satan doesn't just openly oppose Christianity, the truth. Satan doesn't just openly oppose Jesus with Islam, atheism, um, whatever it is. He doesn't just oppose it openly in those ways, but even more dangerously, he does it in a way where he deceives the church from within where it, is, uh, it appears on the surface to be truth, to be Christianity, to be Jesus. But we know that his most effective way is to do it in a way that he's appearing to be, it appears to be Christianity. Satan puts his lies in the mouths of someone who claims to speak for Jesus Christ, but in fact they're lies, and it's not the truth. How do we know the truth? Because of Scripture. We've got to submit to the entire counsel of God in His Word in the context in which is written. So he puts his lies in the mouth of somebody who is speaking for Jesus. How do I know that it's not somebody, the Holy Spirit through the dude speaking for Jesus and the devil through the dude speaking for Jesus? The only way we know that, again, folks, is by applying it to the Word of God, testing what we hear from those who are speaking and teaching us to what God says in His Word. This is the foundation of... This is the truth, and this is where we jump from. This is where we go to to know if it's authentic. Because again, John is saying to this church, test every spirit. That includes us. The Holy Spirit through John is telling us, test every spirit. So we know Satan's most effective strategy for teaching lies is, isn't Islam, it isn't atheism, and all the other false religions. It's not any of that stuff. It's from within. And we, because we know in Acts 20, pause the video and let's turn to Acts 20, uh, verse 30. And we're going to see, again, this is Luke um, writing about Paul talking to the Ephesian church elders. 
He says in Acts 20, verse 30, And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Turn to Matthew 7, verse 15. Because now we have Jesus speaking. God himself saying in Matthew 7, verse 15, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. How do they come to us? In sheep's clothing. They appear to be a sheep, a Christian, a born-again Christ follower, but in reality, they're not. They're ravenous wolves used by Satan. And so how do we know what we're hearing? It's got to go against God's word. It, has, it can't oppose God's word. It can't take something out of God's word. It has got to submit to the entirety of Scripture. Even if they say, um, uh, even if they open the Bible and say something, say, talk about a verse, it has to submit to the whole counsel of God. We must understand why. What, what, what the Bible says and what's being said. That's, that's why we're called to test the spirits. So if you come across a teacher, preacher, pastor who is not willing to put what they say against the test of Scripture, is not willing to do that, but fights against it, the only response that we have is to run. Period. We must Submit to the text. And so, I mean, think, again, think about how Satan is doing this, right? Back to Matthew 7, 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Appear to be authentic, appear to be speaking for truth, appear to be Jesus, appear to be Christianity, but it's not. Okay? Um, let's, let's look at it like this. Let's say I give you a bottle of water, right? There's a full bottle of water. 100% truth. See, what Satan does is he's not going to feed you 100% heresy, 100% lies, 100% crazy talk. He's smarter than that. What he'll do is he'll have some truth. Pure, bottled water. Truth, right? Pure water. That's truth. Let's say it. But what he does is he sprinkles a little false lies in it to get you, he gives you enough truth to get you to bite, but the lies are within it. It's almost as if you take this pure, this water, the bottle of water, I open it up and um, I grab a dropper and I go to the bathroom and I take the dropper and I put it in the toilet and I just get one drop in there. I open up this bottle and I put that drop of toilet water in here. Now, I'm a, I'm a nice guy, so I know that the water's sitting on the top, and I, I don't want you to, if you were to drink it right away, so I'm going to shake this thing up a little bit to get it to move around a little bit. Okay, now, would you drink it? Of course not, you're not going to drink it. It's got toilet water in it. And so that's the same thing when we, when we listen to people who are speaking for Jesus, but they're not teaching the truth. There's a heresy in there. There's a little bit of spiritual toilet water in what they're saying. We can't drink it. It's spiritual toilet water. So we have got to make sure what we're hearing and it lines up with God's Word. Because we see in these verses that the command to test the spirits and the reason why in verse 1, because they're everywhere. There are several bottles of water with one drop of toilet water everywhere. So we must be careful to examine and test the spirits that we are hearing that are speaking on, that they're saying they're speaking on behalf of Jesus and Christianity. And so how do we do that? I'm, I, John's saying the command test the spirits, the reason why, because they're everywhere. Well, how? Again, the Holy Spirit through John gives us the how behind it. Let's look at verses two through six for the guidelines for how to test the spirits. Verse 2, By this you know the Spirit of God. <clears throat> Here we go. This is how you do it. By this you know the Spirit of God. Here we go. He's going to tell us now. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. 
And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. So that's two and three, and we'll look at uh, four, five, six here in a minute. So let's look at this first one. The first guideline that, we, that he identifies is making sure that the teacher is teaching the truth about Jesus himself. Okay? Because keep in mind, he doesn't, he doesn't address in, this, in these verses every nuance about Jesus. The truth that he addresses about Jesus was what? That he came in the flesh. Why is he talking about that one? Why is the Holy Spirit through John writing to this tr group about that specific one? That Jesus Christ came in the flesh. Well, because the false teachers that were coming in, that, that John is identifying uh, to this group that he's writing to, the false teachers that are coming in that are teaching lies, one of the lies that they were teaching was that Jesus Christ didn't come in the flesh. Was Jesus Christ wasn't God, that Jesus Christ was just a spirit. And so John's writing to them to identify, that's a lie. Jesus came in the flesh. And if they're saying that Jesus didn't come in the flesh, that God incarnate, God the Son didn't come in flesh, then they are teaching lies. Because, because these false teachers are just teaching that they, he came in the Spirit, that he was just a spirit floating around. Now remember, earlier in this letter, as well as the Gospel of John, this is something that the Holy Spirit put on John's heart, and it's very important because he's communicating earlier in this letter this very truth. He's combating the false teaching uh, that says Jesus only came in the Spirit. Because Jesus came in the flesh, right? So if you go back to 1 John, um, chapter 1 of this letter, let's look at the first verse. Because if you remember, um, for those of you who have watched the video up until this point, this entire study of 1 John, um, he talks about, he addresses this truth that Jesus came in the flesh. 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, here we go, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands. You can't touch a spirit with your hands. So John has already, ad has already addressed this truth. Jesus came in the flesh. Jesus, God incarnate, came in the flesh. Now, if we are sitting here thinking, well, that's not a heresy that's being taught now, that Jesus isn't God, yeah, of course it is. Even people who are professing to be uh, uh, Christ followers that are saying Jesus, there are some, Jehovah's Witnesses, for example, do not believe Jesus is God. And so there you go right there. That's, that's the, re the real life uh, um, example of somebody who's not teaching the truth about Jesus um, Christ. And, then, and, and again, there are some that say that the Jesus, the Christ Spirit, came upon Jesus but then left Jesus. No. He is God. He took on flesh. So John is addressing this group um, and identifying that this truth. So that's the first guideline that he gives, he gives us. Because we, we got to remember, Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and then God the Holy Spirit. God, all three in one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three persons of the, 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 the Trinity. And so um, if anybody is denying that truth, they're not of God. They're not teaching the truth and not teaching what God says in His Word. Jesus left paradise, set aside paradise, took on flesh, and came um, into this world. Period. That's the truth. So the first test when testing the spirits is to make sure what these verses are telling us, the first test is to make sure that the teacher is teaching the truth that Jesus Christ is both God and and man. He came in the flesh. If the teaching doesn't confirm this, then the teacher is a reflection of the spirit of the Antichrist. That is the first guideline that he says in these verses. Now let's go to the second and last one, because now we'll see then in verses 4, 5, and 6 that another way to test the spirit, another how, um, that with, is to put what they're saying, what we're hearing, and what I'm even saying to you right now, under the microscope of the Holy Scripture in the context that it's written, okay? 
And if it lines up with, and we see fruit in the individual's life and what they're speaking of Jesus, and it lines up with, with the scripture, then we know that it's the spirit of truth. But if it doesn't, if what I'm saying does not line up, or if I'm, I'm leaving something out, if I'm, I'm saying the gospel, for example, is just that is, 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 Jesus loves you, and he wants you to be happy, and he wants you to go to heaven. If that's what I'm saying the gospel is, I'm leaving out a significant part here. And that is, you're a sinner. Your sins have opposed the almighty creator, loving God. You're his enemy. And the sins that we've committed oppose that. And I deserve punishment for that. And the punishment that is just is spending eternity in hell. But here's the good news. Jesus has come. He has taken the punishment from me and put it on himself. And he saved me from my sins so that I'm not continuing in sin. He saves me from hell, the wrath of God, and he saves me from my sins. And so I turn and repent of my sins. We have to talk about, we have to talk about that as part of the gospel. Part of the truth, we must agree with God on our sins and then turn from them. Not continue in them, but turn from them. And so if I'm preaching something and I'm leaving that out, then I'm not teaching the gospel. I'm not preaching the good news. So we have to address that. And so after <coughs> we get done, I'm going to mention a video uh, that I want you to uh, prayerfully and humbly go and view because um, it gives a good example of that very truth of saying uh, something in Jesus' name uh, but not preaching the gospel. And it's very important that we do that. So let's see it. Uh, verse 4 through 6. And what we're looking for here, again, is uh, the second guideline is how to test... Um, what somebody is preaching by applying it to the spirit of truth, the word of God. Four through six. Little children, you are from God and have, have overcome them. Them is the false teachers, right? The false teaching antichrist. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So the first thing I want to talk about here is in verse 6, where he's talking about whoever knows God listens to us. The us, whoever is not from God, does not listen to us. The us that John is talking about, the Holy Spirit through John is talking about the us are the writers of the New Testament. The Holy Spirit working through the writers of the New Testament. Because we find in the New Testament that it, these writers are confirming each other's writings as Holy Scripture. Inspired by God writings. Holy Scripture. God's Word. So the us that he's talking about are him, the Apostle John, and the other writers of the New Testament as well as the Old Testament. The, the Bible in, 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 in general, in, in, in its entirety. And, and, and the men that God has used to work through to write this. So that's the us that he's talking about. Again, pointing back to the scripture. Because we see in the New Testament that, that these guys are talking about each other's writings and affirming them as Holy Scripture. So, so he says, Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So I can't say I'm a follower of Jesus, or I can say it, but it's a lie, if I'm not actually following him. Like if you're in a room, right, and um, you say to a guy, you're in a room with a bunch of people, and you say to the guy, um, go ahead and get up and walk out. I'm going to follow you. I'm going I'm to follow you, right? So he gets up and he starts walking out, and you keep saying, all right, I'm following you, but you're sitting still. You're not moving anymore. Okay, I'm following you. I'm right behind you, man. I'm following you. He walks out the door and he goes on his way, but you're not following him. You, can't, you can say that you're following, but the reality is you're not following him. So following him would actually be following him. So I could say I'm following Christ, but not actually follow Christ if I don't actually do the things and submit to the things that he tells us to do in his word. Right? It makes sense. So, so, so what we see here, he says in, in verse 4, You are from God and have overcome them, for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. How have we overcome these false teachers? It's because we have the Holy Spirit abiding in us. And that's why then, that's how it's even possible to follow Christ. 
apart from the Holy Spirit abiding in us, you can't follow Christ. But the Holy Spirit abides in us and we follow then Christ. Because we have the Holy Spirit abiding in us. We've been born again. What has happened is the Holy Spirit has converted us because we've seen the truth of our sin opposing the holy, righteous, loving Creator of the universe. And my punishment for these sins is eternity in hell. And I recognize that God in His, in His mercy, grace, and love saved me. He put himself, or put himself on the cross, put His Son on the cross so that I may be forgiven for my sins. And that truth is that I'm seeing that truth and trusting in that truth, the Holy Spirit um, opens our eyelids and He then abides in us. Now let's look at verse 5. It says, They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. So we can determine if we are of the world, if we habitually, continuously listen to those who are teaching lies that oppose Scripture but line up with the world. So let me th no, let's think about this again. Because this, you need, please pay attention. And I, Holy Spirit, I pray that you show every person watching this video the truth of their reality in this verse. Verse 5. They are from the world, talking about false teachers. Therefore, they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We have to recognize, and again, John, thank you, Holy Spirit, through the Apostle John, recognizing the truth of we do sin. Believers sin. He talks about it in chapter 1 and verse 8 and 9. He says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, we must be talking about the fact that we sin. Even after the Holy Spirit is saving us. Now, we're not sinless, but we are sinning less after coming to Christ and the Holy Spirit abiding in us. But in verse 5, those that are in the world are listening to the false teachers. Not the openly opposed Islam um, and atheism and all the other false religion, but those who are professing to speak for Jesus and for God and professing to be a Christian, professing to be speaking the truth of the Scriptures, but they're not. And the world listens to them because they're of the world. So the difference between believers and unbelievers when it comes to our sins is when believers sin, we, the Holy Spirit convicts us of it and we turn from it. We submit and we, we, we go to the Lord in prayer and go to the Word and we turn from the sin. Unbelievers continue in the habitual, continuous sin that we're talking about. That's the difference. So let's look at verse 6. Verse 6 says, Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So again, the us that we're talking about are the writers of the New Testament as well as the writers of the Old Testament. Because the, the, they're spirit, Holy Spirit inspired, Spirit of God inspired, Holy Spirit working through um, to deliver what we see now is the complete canon of Scripture, God's Word in its entirety. Nothing added to it, nothing taken away from it, but Scripture. Allow Scripture to speak for itself. I don't take stuff out because I want to make it more palatable for you. We submit to what's already there. Because the Word of God is perfect. Period. With 100% certainty, 100% fact, 100% truth, the Holy Scripture, God's Word, is perfect, inerrant, no mistakes, no errors. And that never contradicts itself. So again, what we see in these verses, we see the, the Apostle John writing to this group and the Holy Spirit through the Apostle John telling us, commanding us to test the spirits. We must test what we hear from professing Christian teachers and preachers and pastors against what the Bible says. We must test it. And in order to do that, we must know the truth of Scriptures. I mean, the, the way tellers know that a counterfeit bill comes across their teller line is because they've studied the original so much. They know what the original, the real dollar bill or, or bill feels like. So that when a fake one comes across, they recognize it immediately. Boom, fake. 
And that's what we're called to do, is to know the authentic, to know the truth, the scriptures, so that when something comes across the line and it doesn't line up with it, we know it. So that's what John is commanding his church to do, test the spirits. Why? Because they're everywhere. He gives us the reason in the second part of verse 1. The, the reason for testing the spirits is because many false prophets have gone out. They're everywhere. And then he gives us in verses 2 through 6 the guidelines on how to do it, where he talked about um, if anybody's saying that Jesus Christ hasn't come in the flesh, false teacher, because that's what was happening to this church that he's writing to. And he, he addressed it earlier in the letter, right? He says, uh, he, where he says, he came and he touched him with his hand, he seen them with his eye. He's historical, he came in the flesh. And then the other thing is, what they're saying, the other guideline of how, is the big one right now. It is to listen to what's being said and test it against the spirit of truth, which is God's word, period. In the context, the proper context that is written, and in, in its entirety, not taking something out, twisting it around, but what is the Holy Spirit through the author writing in the letter that, that we see, the book that we see. So let's read the verses one more time. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come into flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them, for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. False teaching is teaching that is contrary to the word of God. It's a serious problem. False teaching is teaching that leaves important components out of God's word so that you are more enticed to bite, so that you are more interested in listening to what's being said. And a major way that this happens now is that when we're talking about the gospel, we completely leave out my sin, your sin, and how it opposes God, and how that, that's caused, that will cause us to spend eternity in hell, and that, I, I, that then I turn from sin. I don't continue in it. And that component of the truth of the gospel has been taken out so that it's more watered down and palatable for the masses, and we cannot submit to that. We must recognize and teach the truth of the gospel, which is that we are sinners, enemies of God, deserve eternal punishment for the sins that we've committed, but God in Christ has saved us by giving himself on the cross and took the wrath of God upon himself instead of me receiving the wrath of God that I deserve for the sins that I've committed that opposed him and spending eternity in hell. And he saved me from that. Thank you, Lord. We must agree with that. We must teach that. Teachers of the scriptures must teach the truth about the gospel and not leave it out. And so there was a video that God put in front of us um, this week here at the mission and that I would challenge you and encourage you to go and watch after this video and specifically pray on and, and study and read verses 5 um, of what we just studied. Um, where he says, they are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. That verse kind of summarizes this video that I want you to, to, to watch. Now, it's three hours long, so you can watch a portion of it um, and, and, and break it up over a couple of different views. But the, the name of this video, if you search on YouTube, Church of Tares, it's Church of Tares, which is T-A-R-E-S. It's three hours long. And the video teaches about how the, the mega church kind of movement um, leaves a significant portion of the truth of the gospel out to make it more marketable, uh, more palatable, so that they have more people interested in attending church. But they're not preaching the gospel. And so it's this purpose-driven, seeker-sensitive type of a movement that's leaving out the truth of the gospel, leaving Jesus out. Out. And the, the Jesus that Scripture tells us, the, the real Jesus, creating some sort of other Jesus and not talking about and teaching um, of our Lord. 
And so again, it's a YouTube video. It's called Church of Tears. It's three hours, but I, and, and so please listen to me. I pray that you really approach this video in, in gentle humility and, and with a heart that is submitted to knowing the truth of Scripture. Okay? I pray that you're not, um, you, you don't approach this um, with, with aggression, frustration, annoyance, anger. Um, I pray that you submit and, and, uh, with humility and seeking the truth. I pray that before you watch the video, that you spend some time in prayer asking the Lord to show you the truth of Scripture and the truth of what's being taught and how it does not line up with the truth of Scripture. And so that you can view this uh, with a heart that's seeking after Jesus. Because I know Jesus Jeremiah 29, 13 tells us, you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with your whole heart. And so I pray before you go into watching a video like that, that that's exactly what you do. Because the promise is we will find the Lord. We will find the truth that nobody that comes to God in saving faith will be rejected. Nobody. When you come to God in saving faith, He welcomes us. And, 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 that, and being able to do that is to recognize your sin and oppose, that opposes God and to turn from that sin and to the cross and trust in Christ. Uh, so let's go ahead and pray. And um, um, we'll close off, close the video. Lord Jesus, I... Uh, I pray, Lord, that you show the truth of your word to those that are watching the video. You know how difficult it is for me specifically um, and how it challenges our flesh, how uncomfortable it is, and how conflict comes from um, these kinds of conversations. Um, but, Lord, I am, it's more important to me that I'm submitted to you as my Lord in your word because it is the Word of God in its entirety, God, then it is important for me to be liked and to, uh, to run away from conflict, God. So thank you for the courage and the strength to stand on your Word. I pray that those that are watching this video, that you give them also the strength and courage to stand on your Word and to identify, Holy Spirit, for those people who do watch this video, the Church of Tears video. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you show them the truth of what's being taught and how it opposes and leaves out, but just blatantly opposes your word and how clearly it does not the truth. Holy Spirit, please convert and save people as a result of showing them the truth of Jesus Christ on the cross and the word of God. Lord, we will be sure to give you all the praise, honor, and glory because you alone are worthy and we love you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.